What's going on, my friends? Chris here. I want to bring you on an update today of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. I got to go through them quick today. I got a busy day, but I wanted to get these out for you. And what we're going to be doing is looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin on the four hour time frame because what we're paying attention to is to see if we can get one of those climax volume bottoms. I'm trying to put in that local bottom so we potentially can move higher throughout this bull market cycle. So if you guys get something from these quick videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let me know, are you buying today? If you did buy today, just put bot down low. If you've been selling, if you've been swing trading, I would love to hear what you guys are doing. So basically what I started doing, guys, right around $57,000, 57500 I started entering some positions for Bitcoin, and this is to the long side is what I'm going to be looking at here. And the reason for that, when I'm paying attention to this trend here, guys, number one, I was looking at Glassnode earlier, and none of the major whale wallets sold off. We're not having any topping indicators in terms of the top and bottom, whatnot on Glassnode. So there's no warning signs there. This really just looks like a liquidation type thing because people really over leverage, and then the price starts to go down, and it's just a cascading effect. And you can see that when Bitcoin drops, guys, I mean, it's just these massive drops really fast. And that's basically what we have in this space. So you almost have to prepare for that type of thing. But the what's important for us here is that we can hold this 58,388. This is a big level here. So you can see all this area. We want to find support off this area. And that's basically right now what you're seeing is heavy climax volume coming in here. So we're going to have a four hour candle close in about 13 minutes. We're going to have to see what happens here. But we have had some buying pressure. And you can see this climax volume to the downside there and many times what you'll see guys what i'm going to be looking for is once we start to bounce out of here starting to move back up i want to see what type of volume that's on if it's on light volume and we're moving back to the upside then most likely we're going to get another leg down and we're going to visit fifty three thousand dollars it's definitely a possibility but if we can find this big volume coming in this could be our local bottom here and we can go up and challenge some higher levels now what i don't like on the four hour time frame because i always point out bearish stuff as well guys you can see when we had our bullish cross back in here we had been trading up above this 200 moving average on the four hour this entire move to the upside and now what you're seeing is that we're below this so what we need to do is get back up above that 200 and that's going to be at 62,513. So Bitcoin does need to get moving here. We need to find that local support. This has been a pretty big correction here. If we take a look at it, we're down about 15%. And typically November is one of the best months for Bitcoin. So we're just going to have to see if this is a lot of whale manipulation because like I said, guys, I was looking at glass node today and there really wasn't too many signs that big whales are selling off right now. Actually, just Previously, a few days ago, the third biggest Bitcoin whale was actually buying. I think he bought like 206 or 207. Don't quote me on that. But, you know, I, I think there's still some tomfoolery going on, and I think we need to be careful out there. And to me, I saw this as a buying opportunity today, but I was also looking for those oversold levels, especially on the one-hour time frame. So that's what I like to do, guys. You can find those oversold levels on the one-hour time frame when it gets really low. It's when I like to buy. I like to see what type of reaction we get out of that. If it's on low volume, I'll take what I can get. I'll sell it off, and then it'll most likely drop lower. But if it's on good volume and we're moving back up, then I'm going to hold it for a longer swing trade position. So that's basically how I play these things. I'm not panicking right now. I think Bitcoin's just, just doing a lot of manipulation right now, in my opinion. So that's going to be Bitcoin, guys. Really watch these levels. We don't want to drop. Much below 56500 that put us back down to about $53,000 to the upside. We need to get back over top of $60,000 and turn that into support. All right, so that's Bitcoin. Next one we're going to take a look at is Ethereum. We're at $4,069. Okay, so same deal for Ethereum. Guys, we have broken below our 200 moving average. We have traded up above that. Our first day above that was back October 2nd. So we're always paying attention to things like that because this entire trend, we are up above it. So now we have to get back up above that. That's going to act as potential overhead resistance. But the same deal here, having that climax volume. And typically, guys, when you do get the climax volume, it can change that trend. So we've been in this short-term downtrend. You get this big volume, and that's what switches it. And basically what you have to do here, say for Ethereum, go up like this, higher low, higher high, and we're just trying to back test dig our way out of this is essentially what you're looking for but it's nice to see some buying pressure coming in right now main areas for ethereum i don't want to drop much below four thousand dollars i'd like to see us close the end of the day at four thousand dollars we need to get back up above 
I would call it about $4,300 is going to be a big area for us there. But you can see almost trying to put in like a long leg doji candle here at the bottom. So there has been some buying pressure. If we measure this wick up here, you're looking at close to 3%. So that's a nice little wick there. And typically when you get a longer wick on the downside there, you can get a move to the upside. So we have to wait and patient and be patient, I guess is the best thing I would say, guys. And what I like to do when I enter these positions, I don't just put money in at one spot. I calculate once we've had a massive drop, I start to look for the volume tapering down a little bit and I start entering slowly into that and just build a position, get an average, and then try to ride it back to the upside. Right now, relative strength is going to be at 30. So really watch that for Ethereum. Next one we're going to take a look at is Litecoin. If you're here for Litecoin, let me know down low. And guys, that's why in these videos we talk about profit taking, using stop losses and all those things, because I want to take advantage of these moves here. I don't want to give them back. And this is in many coins. I mean, you can look from Bitcoin, the ADA, to all of it. You'll get these massive pumps, and many times you'll give back 60%. And that's why I swing trade this market because I don't want to give back 60% on a move that we had. So when I was selling at, you know, two sixties up in this range, now I'm able to buy back at a lower level when I'm ready to do so. And then you have, you're able to accumulate more and it's not like you have to be done with the coin. So I would always encourage people to really study your technical analysis and swing trade. I don't think day trading, scalping, all that's the best in cryptocurrency. I think the best thing to do, and in my opinion, outperforms hodling, is swing trading and position trading, where you're holding positions for sometimes you know hours up to months. And there's some positions that I'll get in, and as long as the trend's going, I'll keep sneaking up a trailing stop loss, and I'll ride that as long as I can. It can turn into some you hold for four months as long as it's acting right. But I think that's the best way to go. I really want to take advantage of these spikes in this space. So for Litecoin right now, guys, in the four hour time frame, we need to close up above this 200. So actually a little bit stronger than some of the other coins that were below our 200 there. So we need to hold that. I would look for us, if we can get moving here back to the upside fairly soon, we're gonna to look to about 225 is gonna be overhead resistance, then 235, and I'd look up to about 250 is going to be the area right now our relative strength on the four hours at 27. so that's what i'm saying guys i like to buy this type of stuff after we've had a massive sell-off here and say okay i sold at 270 now i want to start getting back into litecoin and you just slowly have buys here and then say it goes down a little bit more you add a little bit more a little bit more and then once you finally get that bounce back to the upside then you start making that profit and you ladder out into strength that's at least how i like to do it and it's helped me in my trading Okay, but we need to get back up above this 232 this big area here that was strong resistance we broke through it we want to turn that into support so we need to get back up through that but you can see these levels here guys at 27 we take a look at our vmc money flow is in the red we got to watch that vwap is negative 5.50 so we have to see if we can start getting a little move back to the upside there but you know we just have to watch and see if this is going to be the local bottom guys or if we're going to head a little bit lower maybe test that 190 or even a little bit lower than that but the importance of pro locking in profit i'll never understate it in terms of swing trading in this space guys so god bless each and every one of you if you get some from this don't forget to like subscribe hit that notification bell don't panic on the weekly scales we're still looking pretty good right now god bless take care